Hi guys, welcome back to Rock Fabulous 40s and today I'm going to be talking about the products that I have reached for the most in the month of March. I don't know why, but I've been having a really hard time. This is like the sixth take at the beginning of this video because I have been having a really hard time trying to say the month of March. I don't know why, it's just not been coming out very well. Anyway, so again, these are the products that I have been reaching for the most in the month of March and I'm going to tell you guys what I thought of these products and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do not a favorites, not I'm, I'm trying to get away from that whole monthly favorites vibe. What I've been trying to do is I've been switching out my makeup monthly which is forcing me to use more products that I normally don't gravitate to and by doing that I can say instead of these are my favorites these are what I've used this month the most and what my thoughts were. So that's where I'm leaning with leaning towards with this. And normally I will do one video for luxury products and one video for more affordable products. Unfortunately, this is only going to be one video because I didn't have honestly a whole lot of drugstore products that I really reached for a lot this month. I, there's a couple, but most of the things that I reached for were more luxury type products. And I hope you guys are okay with that because that's just that's just what I've been gravitating to this month. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right in. And we're going to start with the first thing that I put on my face before I apply any makeup. And that is my primers. I've got two primers I've been using throughout the entire month. And one of them is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primatizer Primer. This guy right here. And I did a video on this. Um, reviewing it. I'll link it down below. I really do enjoy this primer. And actually the video that I did was actually comparing this to the Smashbox Hydrating. But... I do really, really enjoy this primer, so I've been reaching for it throughout the entire month. It's a very nice, lightweight, but yet very moisturizing primer, and I do really enjoy it. The other one I've been reaching for a lot is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. You guys can see I'm like way down here. I really do enjoy this one too. This one is not quite as moisturizing as, say, the Primatizer, but what I do really like about this one, am I, did I just call it the Primatizer? I did. This one is not quite as moisturizing as the primerizer, but what I love about this one is it does give my skin a really nice luminous glow, but not too overly luminous without making the pores and the fine lines really stand out. It does not accentuate those textured areas in my skin, but yet still gives me that nice dew to my face. So I, I really enjoy this as well this month. Alright, so I do have also two foundations that I've been using throughout the entire month. One of them is the, and it is affordable, it is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Tint Foundation, this guy right here, and I am in the shade Honey, number 85, and I've been wearing this quite often throughout the month because, it's, because it is very lightweight feeling, and it does... It's not too overly coverage. It's a very, very light coverage. Like it says, it's a skin tint. It sinks into the skin. It's not, I wouldn't say it's my favorite foundation. It's like, it's not like the best foundation in the world for me, but I can work with it and I am trying to force myself to use it. It's, it's an okay foundation for me. It's a nice light coverage, nice feeling on the skin. And when I first started using this, the reason why I'm forcing myself to use it more, when I first started using this, I wasn't real impressed with how I could actually see it on my skin. But I think that that went back to what my skincare routine was like back then because my skincare routine has since changed and my skin is doing so much better that this actually does now sit a lot better on my skin than it used to. So, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's not the best. It's okay, and I can definitely work with it. Now, the other foundation I've been using I've been really, really enjoying, and I did post a review. If I haven't posted the review for it already, it will be coming up. But this one is the Origins Plant Scription with SPF 15. This is their anti-aging foundation. And in this one, I am in the medium, I am in the color light, medium, cool. I am enjoying this foundation so much. I am actually wearing it today. It is very light feeling. It dries down and sinks into the skin, but doesn't make your skin feel tight or dry or oily. It's great for, I think, all skin types. You really don't need to set it unless you want to. I don't ever wear powder, so it's kind of, well, I don't ever wear powder all over my face. So it's kind of nice not having to, not having to set this on the skin. It doesn't sink into fine lines and wrinkles. It doesn't make my pores look like polka dots. It doesn't make them stand out. And it lasts 
all day long and I have used it with many different primers and I get the same effect with it every time I wear it. So this is this month been an actual favorite of mine. So again, this was the Origins Plant Scription Anti-Aging Foundation. All right, moving on to concealer. The concealer I have been wearing throughout the entire month, I'm almost out of it actually, it is the It Cosmetics CC Plus Eye, this guy right here. And I've been reaching for this guy the most this month because the foundations that I have been wearing are very lightweight and make my skin look very natural but still yet even that this is also a very, very lightweight concealer, and I just love this. Now, this is not going to give you the best coverage, so if you're dealing with a whole, whole lot of, like, dark circles, you might do maybe a color corrector underneath this, but this is so lightweight that it does give you some coverage, and I use my sponge to actually blend it in under the eye and I blend it in, and it looks very seamless on the skin. So it does give you a bit of coverage and looks so seamless. Mine is dirty, I'm so sorry guys, but it does have the cooling little tip that you can take it and just apply like that. I don't do it like that. I put it on my hand, and then I dip a brush into it, and I'll apply it. Sometimes I'll just dip the uh, tip of my sponge into it and apply it. I don't ever do it from the cooling tip here because it just kind of makes it not separate, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It makes it expand too much under my under eye area because I only want to put the concealer just in the shadow right there. I don't want it expanded all the way under like this because any concealer will accentuate lines and wrinkles if it does that. So, but this is a great concealer for just your really lightweight days. Works great with CC creams, BB creams, lightweight foundations, which is how I've been wearing it. Okay, let's go on to powders, powder type products. All right, so one of the things that I have been reaching for a lot this month is this Bare Minerals. This is the translucent powder duo, this guy right here. And this guy actually came in a boxy charm like several months back. And this has got a, this is the uh, Bye Bye Pores pressed powder right here. Okay, which is okay. It's not one of my favorite powders. I prefer the Bye Bye Pores Loose Powder, but I mean, it's okay. It works in a pinch. And then you have this side here, which you can see is kind of marbled. It has, or marbled, did I say marbled? It ha it's supposed to have a glow to it. But honestly, guys, it's got just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of glow. I mean, do you guys see any glow there? I'm not seeing a whole lot of glow there, all right? So it's got just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of glow. Maybe a very natural glow to it. However, the problem with this is, is I find that this really accentuates, accentuates texture because it really, it doesn't really blend completely into the skin and it's so powdery that it just makes all the fine lines and wrinkles right here when I try to apply it just really stand out and it just clings like crazy to the texture on my skin. So this guy has just not really been, I've been reaching for it all month to try to get use out of it, but it's not my favorite and it's not, it's just not really all that great. So I think this is going to go, since I've forced myself to use it all month and, and I'm not really liking it, I think this is going to go into one of my, um, declutter piles. So yeah, so this one for me just not not fabulous. Along with that though, um, I did get the brush that they sold with this and this is the Bare Minerals double-sided brush here. You've got one side that's supposed to go into the powder and one side that's supposed to go into the highlight powder. And honestly, at first I really, really did enjoy this brush for just highlighting right here down the bridge of my nose. It did a great job for that because it's so small and tapered. It worked great. But now I'm finding as I'm using it, it's starting to shed. I used it today and I got little hairs right here that I was having to brush away from this brush. So it's starting to shed. So I'm really kind of disappointed because I did really enjoy the brush. I've had it maybe six months and maybe more, maybe a little more than six months, maybe eight months but it's already shedding and it's, yeah, crazy. The next thing I reached for throughout the month of March is the Balms, the Balm Desert. This is called the Bronzer Blush, this guy right here. And it looks like when you pop it open, it's a pretty decent sized pan here. When you pop it open, it looks like it's gonna be a bronzer because you see how beigey bronze it is. 
However, I wear this as a blush because it's got enough of a pinky red tone. Do you guys see that? Where it just looks beautiful and seamless as a, as a blush. I'm actually wearing it today as my blush and I'm not wearing any other blush under it or over it, just this. And it makes a beautiful blush. So I guess depending on your skin tone, you could wear it either as a bronzer or a blush, but for me, it works great as a blush because of that really uh, nice kind of red tone, undertone that it has to it. It's just, it's beautiful. So this has been a really, really enjoyed product this month and we'll continue to wear that throughout other months. All right, moving on to eyes and brows. The brows I've been using this month is the Book of Beauty Brow Know-How from Pixie. This is a drugstore brand you can get at Target. However, Pixie is not the most affordable drugstore brand. Now, what this is, is that you've got two, four, six, eight different shades of brow product in here. It goes from the blondest of blonde. You've got some reddish tints in here, some light brown, okay, some dark brown and black in here. I usually wear this one, which is the dark brown. You guys see how they're like double panned kind of. I wear this one, which is the dark brown. And it also, it almost looks black, but it's dark brown. It also has a powder that you can use to clean up under the brows if you want, as well as a skin tinted one. So that one, see how that one matches perfectly with my skin? So if I'm going to clean up under my brows with a powder, I would use this one because you can't see it. If I want a bit of a highlight, I'll use this one. It's a very matte, both of these are very, very matte powders here. This palette is great to give you a variety of different colors to choose from for your brows. However, they are very powdery. So I find that this works great if your brows don't need a whole lot of shaping done to them, but if they just need, if you already have pretty powerful brows and they just need just a bit of fill in, this works great. So the way that I apply it, I just use my angled brow brush, just kind of run this through. I run the dark brown one right here through my brows just to fill them in a little bit. And then I go over the top with the clear gel. So, I mean, this is okay. I've got other brow powders that I like better, but I mean, it's, it's just okay. It's not the greatest. I wouldn't go out of my way to go pick this up, but it, it's okay. All right, eyeshadows I've been loving. And I only have one eyeshadow palette that I've been wearing all month long, and I love it. Oh, I love it. See, I've already given it away. This is my Marc Jacobs Iconic Palette in Glambition. I love this guy. This is a beautiful, everyday, very neutral type palette here. Absolutely love this. I am wearing every single shade on my eyes today. So I have, I started with this color as a transition, which is going to be very difficult, I think, to see on my hands here. You guys see that? That one is a transition. I've got this one in my crease. Look at that, beautiful. I've got this one in my outer corner. It's kind of a reddish brown. I have this one in my outer corner and just partially up into my crease. Look at that pigmentation, guys. You guys see that? Oh, it's beautiful. I have this one right here all over the lid. I'm trying to find a good place to, to put it here. Let's go right there. Oh, look at that. Look, just look at that. Is that not beautiful? Look at that. Got that one all over the lid. I've got this one in the inner corner and in the middle of the lid. That guy right there. And then I've got this one as my brow bone highlight. I'm trying to find another good place to put it. Okay, right there. So this is a beautiful everyday neutral palette. I can glam it up as much as I want to glam it up or I can dress it down as much as I want to dress it down. I have worn this out in the evening. I have worn this to work. I have worn this just going to the grocery store. I mean, this is a wonderful everyday palette. And I think this is probably going to stay in my everyday makeup drawer because I just, I love it that much. Now granted, there will be other things I reach for, I promise. But 
this palette is just one that I just want to have in my everyday makeup drawer just to fall back on whenever I need to. So again, this is the um, Glambition palette from Marc Jacobs, the iconic Glambition palette from Marc Jacobs. I want to get some of the other ones and try some of the other ones out. There was another one that had caught my eye, but I haven't brought myself to buy it yet, but I think I will. And the, the shadows are so pigmented, very little to almost no fallout. So great shadows. And then for my eyeliner, a lot this month. I've been using the Urban Decay Glide On Pencil and Alkaline. I'm actually wearing that in my lower rim and my tight line today. And this is just a beautiful, kind of a, a deep, dark, berryish, maroon, almost brown type shade. It is a beautiful, beautiful shade. What I do is I put that, today how I did it was I put this in the waterline and just went over the top of it with the dark brown shade in the uh, Marc Jacobs palette here to set it. This one is called Over the Top. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention to you guys too, I have this black right here. This black right here on the, uh, right underneath the uh, lower lash line. Look at that. Beautiful. Forgot to mention that. Anyway. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, the Urban Decay 24-7 shade and alkaline I can actually wear on my water lines without it leaving a funky film on my contact lens. So this is a good one for that. Um, unfortunately, I have tried other Urban Decay 24 7s that I can't do that, but this one I can, no film, contact stay clear. It's a good little eyeliner right here. All right, lashes. For lashes, I have been reaching for my Clinique bottom lash on my lower lash line. This pretty much stays in my everyday drawer. I know some people find this to be a little tedious because the wand is so small. However, I can usually get it on my lower lashes pretty quick and I never have to worry about smudging or smearing when I have this. So this pretty much stays in my everyday drawer. I love it. I will trade it out sometimes maybe for some of my skinny mascaras, but for the most part, I keep always going back to this guy. Okay, and also on my upper lashes, what I've been reaching for is this L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. I've been reaching for this all month. Um, and I really, it is one of those white primers. And I, the more I use this, the more I like it. When I first started using it, I was just kind of like, you yeah, know, it kind of makes my mascara smudge a little bit. But I just kept trying it. And then eventually my mascaras just quit smudging. So I don't know if maybe it was a primer I was wearing on my lids or if it was a shadow I was wearing on my lids that was causing that to happen. But the more I use it, the, the, it just kind of quit doing that. So now I use this a lot. I've used it all month long. Yes, it is the white one. It does leave the white tint on your lashes, but it will dry to a clearish, clearish tint. And then I've been going over the top of it with my Smashbox X-Rated. I don't hear anybody ever talk about this mascara, but I love this mascara. This is such a great mascara. It is, it, on the brush, the brush is almost scary looking, and the product does look a little thick and clumpy on the brush, but once applied to the lashes, it just fans your lashes out, and it doesn't get clumpy on the lashes at all. And typically, I can get away with just one coat of this. I don't know why I don't ever hear anybody talking about this mascara. It is so good. Anyway, so I've been reaching for this one all month long. Another thing that I have been reaching for, which I am wearing right now, and this one, I really, I don't know, I kind of have mixed thoughts on it, but I'll explain. Um, this is the Chanel Rouge Double Intense Ultra Wear Lip Color, this guy right here. And the reason why I'm kind of mixed feelings on this is the, this is the, the shade right here. It is a double sided, so you have your shade, you have your gloss. Now this one is in the, what shade is this? This one is in the shade Brilliant Rose. I am wearing it today. It is a very beautiful color. You pop it open, you've got your typical, you know, doe foot applicator here. And the color is beautiful. It goes on, it's got that very moussey like texture, but it is kind of sheer, which I like. It's a moussey type texture, but it's not like a liquid lipstick where it would like completely dry down to your lips. It never completely dries down, but it does have a very nice staying power. So the actual color portion of this lip product I really enjoy a lot and have been using it all month. The part that gets a little iffy for me is this side, which is a clear gloss. And the clear gloss, you can see, has 
a brush on it here. But do you see the color on the end of the clear gloss here? It's because the lipstick color does not ever completely dry down. So it's still a little tacky when you go to put, not tacky, tacky is not a good word. It's still a little wet. Yeah, when you go put the gloss over top so a little bit of the color gets on the gloss brush. But that's not my bother. My bother with it is the gloss it itself is very thick. It feels very thick on the lips, a little sticky almost on the lips. So it takes me about 15 minutes or so of wearing the gloss before it actually gets comfortable enough that it doesn't feel so sticky. So it's almost like the gloss just sort of within about 15, 20 minutes kind of sinks into the lips a little bit and still leaves you with the shine, but is no longer sticky and is very comfortable on the lips at that point. My problem with it is, is it takes that 15 or 20 minutes to get it that comfortable because at first, like I said, it is very thick and gloopy when you first apply it. So my lips are very uncomfortable during the first 15 to 20 minutes. After that, it's okay. So that's where I fall a little short with this is just the gloss part. I wish it just felt comfortable from the get-go, but maybe that comfort is, or that discomfort is what keeps the lip color and the gloss on because I've had this on now for about an hour and you'll see that it's still glossy. So maybe that's what keeps the gloss, but it's not sticky anymore. There's no stick to it anymore at all. So, I mean, it's a good product, sure, if you can get past the first 15, 20 minutes of the gloss. Now I have worn the color separate by itself and it does have a pretty good staying power and it's not uncomfortable at all. It never completely dries down so it's not kiss proof. So the, the color part is really, really good. That's pretty much what I've been gravitating towards all month, uh, the month of March. Now, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot of affordable here, um, but this is what I've been reaching for, and those were my thoughts of the products that I had been reaching for. I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Also, guys, let me know if you have tried any of these products and what your thoughts were, or if you guys do this whole switching out of makeup every month and trying different products. Let me know some things that you have tried and whether you've liked them or not. Um, I'm very interested to know that. If you guys want to be notified of videos that I have posted, go ahead and hit the bell down there as well. And also down there is a subscribe button. If you hit that, you too can rock your fabulous 40s. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.